Hey folks, Justin Thayer, TeamThayer.com. Today uh, I'm going to discuss the study that I've been doing on mental disposition and its correlation to success. Mental disposition is so important because it's not just the individual that's affected by an individual's mental disposition, but an individual's mental disposition can affect the outside world success of the success of people that are outside of this individual's uh, circle or sphere or world. Um, it, it's, it's not too far of a stretch to say, you know, people, everybody knows that you, you want to stay away from haters and, you know, bad attitudes bring everybody down. You know, that's really easy and um, it's easy to say and it, it's a, a kind of layman's way of explaining this. But with myself, I've noticed that in my life, it's been a predominant role. Uh, there are people in my life who want, want to succeed with me or help me succeed or excited about my success and I'm with them. And then people who absolutely seem to, uh, what I thought was not care, but what I found out you know, later in life was they actually did not like that I had success due to their own insecurities about their ability to have success. So it's an important thing that needs to be discussed for anyone who runs a business, manages a business, it doesn't matter if you're a CEO or the manager of a 7-Eleven. This is an important factor that needs addressed. Um, I have personally seen businesses taken out by a few bad mental disposition employees. A car lot hit, you know, here in Eugene, Oregon, I had seen taken down by one, right, person who was in a position of power, a position uh, <clears throat> where he was able to affect the business and the public and the other employees, and he had a bad mental disposition. A mental disposition is basically a general mental attitude or the capacity to feel a certain emotion based on outside stimuli. So. Let's say a person with a good mental disposition would be the person who, when a coworker or a friend has a, an amount of success beyond their own, they are happy and, ex, and or inspired. So it would be, you know, for me personally, <clears throat> I've always been this way. If I see somebody doing something, I, I get excited and, and I'm like, wow, you know what? I'm not even sure if I can achieve that, but I'm, if I could just do a little bit of it, that would be great, right? Um, and the opposite or antithesis to that would be, and this is something we all know that happens, you know, that's why many people, you know, haters, I mean, that's a huge thing throughout history my whole life, you know, people have been talking about haters this and haters that. And what I found is a lot of the people talking about haters were haters. But when we get more scientific about it, the antithesis would be, let's say I was, when I was working in the car business, if another person had was beat me at salesman of the month, I actually did have a bad mental attitude, right? I did not, I, I remember, right, I wanted to win so bad, I wanted to be the top guy so bad that I... <clears throat> I wasn't happy about their success. However, I was inspired by their success. There is a healthy way to be competitive and not have a bad mental disposition. An unhealthy way to be competitive, if I were to actually spend time trying to sabotage this same co-worker's production in order to achieve my goals instead of being inspired and working harder for the next month to actually spend time and energy sabotaging it or just uh, it's kind of being a what you call spreading a cancer a verbal cancer which would be just to make every excuse in the world why they're favored or they have an advantage in some way to where everybody's against yourself right that bad mental disposition is dangerous to all types of businesses. Bad mental disposition is dangerous to all types of businesses. Okay? 
the people that are under your employ or under your management, you need to know what their mental disposition is. And you need to categorize them. Everybody needs categorized because everybody has a category. And it's about 50-50 in nature. Scientists have proven there's about 50-50s really close to people with a positive mental disposition and a bad mental disposition. They don't know whether it's environment or it's inherently genetic. They think it's a little bit of a combination of both. Uh, you know, a, a lot of it, I'm sure, is learned. You got, you know, your, your mentalities or biases. Uh, one of them is learned helplessness. And then the other one, which we call the welfare state mentality. These types of mentalities or the lottery mentality, these types of mentalities breed, right? The people who, who talk and think in this manner, it breeds bad mental disposition, right? People that are, seem to have good mental disposition come from different mentalities. Uh, hardworking, uh, they don't tend to play the lottery, they don't, they're not trying for the big win, they're not saying, you know, trying to, they don't blame other people, and uh, tend to love the process. It, and that's the study that I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of study on this in the last three days, so it's just not stuff I'm pulling out of the air. Um, some of this is stuff in my life experience, but this is scientific stuff. Um, for me, running, running this business, <clears throat> I immediately put people into one of two categories. There are people with a fairly positive or a positive disposition, mental disposition, and then the antithesis, the negative disposition on people that I deal with. Now, in my business, I tend to not deal with people who have the negative disposition. Now, I do have clients. I have lots of clients with a negative disposition and I've been able to get the job done for them. But when it comes to somebody under my employ, let's say a contractor or service agreement person that I need to use, title company, what, what have you, assistant, um, brokerage services, people that help me with that, accounting, in those positions, I really look for people with positive mental dispositions before I hire them. <clears throat> However, that is not always possible. Okay, so when it is not possible, if you're running a big company, if you're running right, uh, just a large corporation or whatnot, with you, you can't have you can't have it all. You're not going to have every employee have a positive mental disposition. But what you can do is you can manage right the functions of these people. So this is important, right? You can manage the functions of the people based on their mental disposition, whether negative or positive, all right? So there are, I've studied this, there are some job types that require positive mental disposition to be successful. And those are going to be your management, your sales, okay, type positions. So your CEOs, your managers, <clears throat> Um, uh, uh, your motivators, you know, your salesmen and your motivators, your your coordinators, right? Uh, your problem solvers. <laughs> These people need to have positive mental attitude. Now, there are positions that you can place employees in that do not require entirely a positive mental attitude, even though it helps. So basically, your, your skilled labor, when it is labor, skilled labor, so not management, you're not coordinating, you're not selling, you're not having uh, interpersonal contacts and relationships that, that require, that they're not required to bring the, the, the money in. These people can function fine. You can work on an assembly line or be a welder or even a mechanic, you know, lots of things you can do that do not require a positive mental attitude for success. You know, it helps. It definitely helps. But remember, I mean, with a population being kind of split 50-50, you really, you know, you don't have choices. In my line of work, 
I have choices. I mean, if they're now, I am not going to bother trying to find somebody with a great positive mental disposition when I'm hiring somebody to clean a disgusting bank foreclosure. I just need them to get the job done, and I need it to be uh, for for uh, an amount of money that makes sense, right? However, when it comes to me, who I'm choosing to be the the title and escrow servicer, right? Uh, the the inspector who right the inspector is who has contact with my client. Uh, all these types of people, I need to have a positive mental attitude. Right? I can't have them being negative or having this uh, problem with my most valued asset. My most valued asset is my clients. Okay, And just to put it in perspective, a lot of people watching this are in sales or are in the, the type of service industry that I'm in. Right? I provide a service. There's no product I sell. I provide a service to people selling a product. Right? So if you are anywhere from a martial arts studio where you're providing knowledge, a service, right, a structure to what I do, a real estate broker, to where I'm providing a service, a structure, okay? This, <laughs> these are important, important places to make sure at the very top, the people who are affecting your client or your income base, right? Have a positive mental attitude, okay? Because the one thing that a negative mental attitude or a mental disposition does is it creates issues within the social dynamic of your business or entity. And it can spread like a cancer, right? That there are, there are people who can take a social dynamic, even on an assembly line, and do what I would call sewer or taint, right, the production of that assembly line, right? It needs to be kept in check. When you start having more and more people, whether it be clients or servicers or whatever the case may be, when you start to see it spread, and how do you know it's spreading? It's easy, negativity, complaining, right? So you're hearing complaints and not solutions. Right? So if your manager or your salesperson is coming up to you as an owner or manager or CEO with a complaint and never a solution, just a complaint, and anytime there is a solution, it's the ultimate solution, eliminate the problem, right? Just get rid of, right, get rid of the you know, top salesman because uh, he stepped on my toes. Right? This is, these are the types of people you need to either keep in check, make sure they're, number one, you need to make sure they're in the right position. Make sure they're not uh, affecting too much of your business. Keep them in check, right? Or get them out. Uh, there are ways to, for a person, an individual, if an individual can critique himself enough, if his self esteem gets to a point where they can critique themselves enough, to where they want to change their dominant mental disposition. This is achievable. Um, it, just go online, just Google it. Um, you can Google uh, how changing, uh, right here, there's an article or a study about changing, it says how changing your mental attitude changes your reality. And it really does. Um, changing your mental attitude does change your reality, right? A person with a bad mental attitude is just complaining, pointing fingers, right? right? A person with a positive mental attitude is, right, when they see a problem, right, they're, kind of, they're coming with solutions, and they're saying, how, how can I help? What can I do to make this better? Right? Huge. Just that concept, right? Just that concept. That's all I have for today, folks. TeamThere.com.
write a comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. Have you been affected by a person's negative mental disposition? Are you running a company? Are you a, a startup or, or just starting in, in, let's say, real estate or any other business and you're struggling finding people or measuring people's mental disposition? Let me know. Subscribe to my channel. There's a red button up there. You hit that red button. It'll take you to the front page where there is the uh, little red subscribe button. Hit that. I greatly appreciate my subscribers. It helps me out a lot. Uh, this channel has been growing by leaps and bounds every month. And I just am happy and ecstatic about the people who have come out, watched my videos, commented, and for the most part, it's been real positive feedback. However, I like to keep it real. If something is off course, anybody who has anything to challenge, any of my concept ideas or any of the videos that I make, please feel free to do so. I find it, it you know, it's stimulating and it gets me motivated. See you next time. There you go, Marcus.